Many have been the events that prove that we are in the end times. We can already see this with the increasing hunger, with climate changes becoming more frequent, and also with humans becoming increasingly distant from God. And it was exactly about this that Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 24. See what he said. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Perceive that wickedness is one of the things that Jesus said would increase in the world just before his return. That's exactly what's happening, isn't it? Or do you think that the lack of love for others has grown by chance? Of course not. And the one who confirms this for us is the Apostle Paul. Let's read what he wrote in his second letter to Timothy. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. We are living in the last days, and that's exactly what I want to prove to you in today's video, showing you the seven sins that are dominating the world before the return of Jesus, so that you can watch out and not practice them, okay? But before we start, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Just click the button below the video, subscribe, and a bell will appear next to it. Click on that bell to be notified whenever I post a new video, all right? So let's get started. The first sin is selfishness. The first sin pointed out by the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy is selfishness, and if we analyze it closely, it is already happening with great force. Just a quick look at social media is enough to see that humans are full of themselves, flaunting what they have achieved, not caring about others or the things of God. Selfishness is one of the worst spiritual diseases of this century because it kills the essence of man and distances him from the Lord. It goes against the main commandments of Jesus, which are to love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Unfortunately, selfishness is taking over the world, but we Christians cannot conform to this. We must follow the footsteps of Christ, who came to serve and give his life for others. Are you willing to give up your desires to do the will of the Lord? Think about it. The second sin is greed. The second sin that the Apostle Paul brings in his letter is greed, which is nothing more than the love of money. And at another time, the Apostle Paul said, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Have you ever stopped to think about the amount of crimes that are committed in the world every day because of money? There are frauds, robberies, homicides, wars, families are destroyed, and dreams are interrupted because of the love of money. But you see, the problem is not money itself. In fact, it is a gift from God in our lives so that we can sustain ourselves and help those in need. The problem is the attachment to material things. And this verse we just read says that many, because they loved money, have been tormented with much suffering. And that's exactly what has been happening these days. Many rich people with a lot of financial means have entered depression, had anxiety and panic attacks, all because of the desire to always have more. So, my dear brother and sister, be very careful, because people who put money first stop seeking God and completely stray from faith. The third sin is immorality. The lack of holiness is a sin that has dominated the whole world in these last days before the return of Jesus. And we don't even need to talk much about it, do we? Just a look at television or social media shows scenes full of sensuality and sexuality. Today, there are apps that pay people for sensual photos and videos, and in the desire to earn more, men and women expose their bodies to strangers without any concern, not to mention the websites aimed at people who want to commit adultery. And you know what's worse? All of this is considered super normal, but immorality is an offense to God, because the Lord is holy. Let's see what the Bible says. 
Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Brothers, if we want to live with Christ and reign with Him forever, we need to repent of our sins and seek a life of holiness. Therefore flee from immorality and live for the glory of God. The fourth sin is blasphemy. This is the most serious sin a person can commit. Unfortunately, we see it happening all the time in soap operas, movies, series, music, and also on the internet. See what Jesus said. And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Blaspheming is speaking ill, cursing, offending, inventing lies, and we know that the Pharisees did this all the time against Jesus. But Christ himself said that even that could be forgiven. The great danger was blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because the role of the Holy Spirit is to convict man of sin and lead him to repentance. And to be saved, a person needs to repent of their sins. Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit is ignoring the only one who can convince them to abandon sin and receive forgiveness. And maybe you're asking yourself, did I ever blaspheme against the Holy Spirit? My brother, if you are repentant, then you have not blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit does not feel bad or guilty and does not intend to change their life. Jesus made it clear that he never rejects those who come to him. Confess your sin and you will receive forgiveness. Amen. The fifth sin is complacency. Who doesn't like to be in their comfort zone, right? We like things to stay the way they are, and that's it. And one of the main signs that we are complacent is when we do not make decisions or take on responsibilities that could cause us some discomfort. But why would that be a sin? Because it is impossible for you to fulfill God's call and bring His word to people without leaving your comfort zone. The Apostle Paul said that the gospel is the power of God for salvation. In other words, it is capable of transforming people's lives and restoring families. But when you are complacent, instead of feeling the desire to share God's love, you are simply satisfied with attending church and thinking that you have fulfilled your role as a Christian. And in these last times, distractions and entertainment are increasing a lot. People spend hours, days, and weeks watching TV series, listening to music, playing video games, hanging out with friends, and don't even realize that Jesus could come back at any moment. Therefore, the best way to overcome the sin of complacency is to fight against your flesh and join with people who have been walking with God. Amen? See what the Bible says. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. The sixth sin, arrogance, is when a person thinks they are better than others and has no interest in hearing other opinions. Because they think they are always right, their vanity is greater than anything else, including their love for God. And this is another sin that has dominated the world, isn't it? Stop for a minute and reflect. How many people do you know who consider themselves smarter, more cunning, and even more spiritual than others? Little do they know that arrogance only leads to destruction and separation from God, because the Bible says that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we should never be arrogant, because Jesus is about to return and only those who have the humility to recognize that they are nothing without His grace and mercy will be saved. For Christ only saves those who repent of their sins and believe in Him as the only Savior. Amen? The seventh sin is ingratitude. The Bible says that man has a deceitful and corrupt heart by nature, and ingratitude is a consequence of this. It is nothing more than a lack of recognition for those who have done good to you. Be honest. How many times have you thanked God for something today? And in the last week, how many times have you said thank you to the Lord? When a person becomes ungrateful, it is only a matter of time before they forget who helped them achieve everything they have and who they are. And nowadays, unfortunately, we have seen many people like this. 
They receive gifts and talents, are blessed with health, material possessions, and still do not recognize God's hand and do not thank Him for everything they receive. And this is exactly what happened to Jesus when He healed ten lepers. The Bible says that only one from that group came back to thank Him, and Christ Himself was surprised by the lack of gratitude from the other nine, remembering that this man who thanked Him was not even Jewish. He was part of a people considered inferior. And do you know what this teaches us? That people who have been saved by Jesus can fall into the same mistake of not recognizing God's love and mercy because they have become accustomed to it. So, my brother, remember every day the great work that the Lord has done in your life and thank Him very much. Amen. Brothers and sisters, these are the seven sins that have prevailed in today's world. Of course, there are many others. But what I want to tell you is that Jesus is about to return. Very soon the trumpet will sound and the Savior of the world will come to destroy the Antichrist, false prophet, and their leader Satan. And how will we be before that? Will we seek the Lord while there is still time, or will we continue to live as if Jesus will never return? The choice is yours. So do not let any of these seven sins dominate your heart, amen? If you liked this message, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you.